Okay, so if you're taking pre-algebra, we're going to take a look at a nice pre-algebra problem. Now, most people at the pre-algebra level should be learning how to do things like this, solve this type of equation. But uh, sometimes uh, this is not taught. It all depends on what school you're going to, what math class you're taking. This could be like an Algebra 1 problem as well. And maybe some of you are going back to school when you're just kind of taking a basic math class in college. So if you're kind of taking a basic Algebra course, this is a type of problem that you should be able to handle. So you can see here we have two over y plus 1 is equal to 2 fifths. We want to go ahead and solve for y. If you think you could solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct uh, solution here in just one second, and then we're going to go through this step by step to show you exactly how to solve this and really kind of emphasize what's the topic here. Okay, what is the algebraic concept that we want to know? Certainly, we're talking about equations, but there's something else going on uh, as well. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's my true calling to help people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. Okay, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in math. Maybe you don't like math. Maybe you've failed math before in the past. Maybe you're struggling with math right now. Listen, I get it, okay, but please do not give up. There's absolute hope to turn this all around. So here's the three things you need to be successful in math. The first is you got to be willing to work hard. So if you're not working hard, you're not taking notes, you're not doing homework, you're not paying attention in class, well, you know, you're going to have a tough time learning anything, right? So you got to work hard. The second thing you need is encouragement, okay? And as this is especially important for those of you that have a difficult time learning math, okay? You want to know that, hey, if you work hard, that you actually will kind of learn this material. And I'm going to tell you yes, all right? So you need some encouragement from someone that you trust, and hopefully you trust me, okay? And I'm saying to yourself, don't give up. Keep going. So that's encouragement, motivation, right? But the third thing you need to really kind of pull this all together, the most important thing you need is great math instruction. You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. Nothing's more frustrating than learning and like not knowing what's going on. So math is a very technical subject and it all depends on how, you know, your teacher wants to teach you or whatever you're learning from. If you're reading a textbook, it could, oftentimes it could be very technical and confusing. The way I like to, the way I like to teach math is to explain uh, concepts and skills in uh, such a manner that everyone knows what's going on, okay? Try to uh, teach math in a very easy to understand way without watering down what students need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for, something like uh, the GED, SAT, ACT, or teacher certification exam, something that has a math section on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. Some students take no notes to your surprise. I was that way back in the good old days when I was in high school. I just took no notes, and I always ended up with grades like this. But uh, if you really, truly want to be great at math, you have to take great math notes. So you can use my math notes in the meantime, but improve your notes. That's really important. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so hopefully, uh, you know, certainly if you're at the Algebra 1 level, this is a problem that you should be able to handle. But most of you uh, at the pre-algebra pre level should be able to do this as well. And if you're like, oh, I take pre-algebra, I've never seen this before, well, don't walk away. This is not that difficult. But let me go ahead and show you the correct answer to this equation. So the answer is y is equal to 4. Okay, so how did you do? Well, hopefully you are able to get this right without too, uh, too much difficulty. And if that is the case, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell all your friends and family that you solved a pre-algebra uh, equation perfectly today. Pretty awesome stuff. Okay, so that is the answer, but let's go ahead and see... Uh, basically, what are we talking about here, right? We're dealing with equations, but there, I said there was another topic involved, and that topic is something called proportions, okay? 
So when you look at this problem, it's basically what? It's an equation, right? We're like, okay, what's going on? That's this thing equal to this. And you, as you know, in pre-algebra and algebra, you solve a ton of equations. But I kind of want you to stand back here and see a bigger picture, okay? This is a fraction. We have one fraction bar, right? So we have a fraction right here. So we have one fraction equaling to another fraction, not three fractions, okay? In other words, we don't have something like this, right? If I had an equation like this, where I have a fraction equaling to two other fractions, that's not what I'm talking about. Specifically, one fraction equaling to one fraction. Okay, you can just see how many fraction bars. When you have that kind of situation in algebra, you're dealing with something called a proportion. Okay, so you can look at this, be like, oh, here's a proportion. Certainly, it's an equation. Okay, and there's different ways you can kind of approach it, but always be on the lookout for proportions because proportions are extremely uh, important in mathematics and very easy to solve once you understand what's going on. But let's go ahead and take a look at an easy example of a proportion. So I said a proportion is two equal fractions, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the fraction one half. So if I said to you, hey, um, what is another fraction that's equal to one half? There's a ton of them. You could say, oh, three over six is equal to one half. How about four over eight? You could do five over 10. You could do 30 over 60, right? There's actually infinitely many fractions that are equal to one half. So it doesn't make a difference uh, what other, uh, what two fractions you want to compare, as long as they're uh, equal in numeric value, that's what we're talking about. So let's take a look at this quick example. We have one half is equal to three over six. So by definition, this is a proportion. So when you're dealing with a proportion, or when you have a proportion, you have a particular property that holds true, and this is called the cross product. Now there's other things you want to know, may need to know about proportions, but this I'm going to suggest to you is the most important concept you want to remember about proportions, and it's called the cross product. There's some other fancy ways to describe this called the means and extremes. But just remember this, I think you'll be A-OK. -okay. So the cross product is what? Well, obviously we want to do something crosswise, and product means multiplication. So what we're talking about is this. When you have a proportion, the cross product is true. In other words, if I multiply, kind of crisscross this way, I multiply this way, the, the answer, okay, or the product of two times three is equal to one times six. And we could see that right here, right? Two times three, this is a cross product right here. Of course, two times three is six is equal to one times six, which of course is six. So the cross product is true when you have a proportion. You want to keep that in mind because that's how you can solve a bunch of equations that are one fraction equaling to another fraction like this. We can actually say to ourselves, hey, we can use the cross product because we have a proportion, and that's exactly what you want to do. But before we even start this, um, start to solve this particular problem using the cross product, you could uh, use common sense. Uh, some of you out there may have looked at this problem and we're like, you know what, I'm not even gonna use algebra because I see exactly what's going on here. So let's just check this out for a second. A lot of you are gonna be like, wow, this is easy. So here is a fraction two over five. Okay, let's notice its numerator is two and its denominator, its bottom number down here is five. So I'm saying this fraction is equal to this fraction. Well, the numerators are the same. This is two, this is two, right? And if these are the same fraction, well, what's this denominator have to be? Well, this is two and this is two, this is five. Well, this down here, this whole thing has to be five. So uh, this denominator has to be equal to five. So we have y plus one, but this has to be five. So what number plus one ha uh, will give us a five? Well, four, right? This y must be a four because four plus one is equal to five. So if you kind of reason through this problem in that respect as well, that's actually very, very good. Okay, well, I specifically chose uh, this problem to be nice and easy, uh, but if you did observe this little, you know, this kind of little uh, way to kind of approach this problem, that's very, very good, okay? But let's go ahead and actually use the cross product to solve this proportion or this equation. So here is what we need to do. So the first thing is this, anytime you multiply any sums or difference in algebra, okay, let's notice here I have parentheses, 
The problem is y plus 1. I'm going to suggest to you, anytime you see um, anything with you know, you're adding or subtracting, any sums or differences in mathematics, always put grouping symbols around them. It's going to help you avoid making mistakes. Now, how would I know this? Well, because I've been teaching math not for years, but for decades, and I probably graded maybe 100 million tests and quit. Well, maybe not that much. You get the idea, right? You just see the mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm just telling you, get in the habit of put, uh, putting parentheses around sums and differences. It can help you avoid making common mistakes because what we're going to do, whoops, I don't want to do that. I don't want to erase the prom is we're going to take this 2, we're going to multiply, we're going to use the cross product. We're going to take the 2, we're going to multiply by this, because this is a proportion, and that's going to be equal to 2 times 5. Okay, so let's go and do that now. So it's going to be 2 times y plus 1. So we're going to write it this way. Now, if we didn't have these parentheses here, here's what a lot of students would do. They would go 2y plus 1. That's uh, incorrect, okay? You're only multiplying by this 2 by this y. But if you have parentheses, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I have to use the distributive property, which be, uh, which is uh, correct. So it's going to be 2 times y plus 1, and that's going to be equal to 2 times 5. Again, we're using the cross product here to solve this equation, right? So 2 times y plus 1 is equal to 2 times 10, or 2 times 5, which, of course, is 10. All right, so the next step is we're going to use the distributive property. So that's going to be 2 times y, or 2y. And that 2 gets multiplied by that uh, 1, so that's 2. Okay, if you didn't have the parentheses here, so many students forget to do that, and then they get the wrong answer, and then they're very sad. You know, they're like, why did I get the wrong answer? Well, listen, you got to watch more of my videos, and uh, you won't make these mistakes. Okay, so here we go. We have 2y plus 2 is equal to 10. It's going to solve for y. What do we need to do? We're going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. We'll get 2y is equal to 8. And then how do we solve this basic equation? Just simply divide both sides of the equation by 2. So you're going to get y is equal to 4. And of course, we knew that because we kind of just looked at this from a common sense uh, standpoint that, oh, yeah, well, y must be equal to 4 in order for this denominator to be 5. But, uh, you know, a lot of different things going on here, right? We're talking about proportions. We're talking about the distributive property. But one of the things that you get from experience, okay, this is why you want to learn from someone who has a lot of experience and hopefully... You know, you choose to watch more of my videos, or maybe better yet, check out one of my full courses. Uh, if you need help with this, I'm going to suggest that you obviously check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. But these little uh, hints here, like, hey, put parentheses in, this comes from experience. And that's what you're going to get when you learn from me. You're going to get um, like little things that, you know, a textbook sometimes doesn't really... Um, a stress that can help you avoid common mistakes. And that's really a huge part of math is how do you avoid the most common mistakes, right? Math books don't teach you that necessarily, okay? And if they might mention a thing or two, but as a teacher, okay, and this is not just me, but anyone who's been teaching for a long, long time, you know, you just see the mistakes because you're constantly grading stuff and you can just see what, uh, you know, areas of math tend to confuse most people. So hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, if you need help with proportions or pre-algebra, I'm going to direct you towards my pre-algebra course or even my Algebra 1 course as this problem or this topic could be uh, more taught. It all depends on your particular course that you're taking. But pre-algebra and Algebra 1 uh, would be good levels. Of course, you can find all that at my math help program. All right, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.